Hey legends, welcome to another edition of Buy, Hold, Sell for round 16. And we've got an express version of BHS this week, simply because I am just absolutely under the pump at work at the moment. And uh, I'm probably about another week or two away from being back in the groove and back into a normal schedule. So thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for all the awesome comments. Thank you for the emails as well. Really appreciate the support. And I'm hoping you and your fantasy team are absolutely firing. So with that in mind, let's get into it. Now, this one is basically, like I said, an express version. We're just going to go through each of the players up top and uh, I'm going to add a little bit of commentary there. So first up, we've got Jaden Campbell. I think he's a decent buy if you need a wing fullback. He's found some decent form in the last two games, and as long as he can stay healthy, then I think he is decent, especially if you're looking for some buy coverage. So let's just give him the tick. Next up, we've got Lehigh Hopawati, and I'm going to put a bit of a question mark here because we know Tommy Turbo is not too far away, and the, uh, the Sea Eagles have a little bit of a trickier buy schedule, so one to absolutely watch. But he is pretty cheap, and probably should be considered if you're looking to downgrade. Now, I wouldn't do it unless you've got a decent amount of trades, that's for sure. Next up, we've got Pappy. Now, I would really want to see how he comes back from that, uh, that injury, and will he get straight back into the groove? Or is it going to take him a couple of weeks to uh, to fully get back into the swing of things? Now, one guy I'm definitely looking at is Big Stefano Utuakamano. I think he is an absolute weapon. Amazing buy coverage as well. A little bit expensive for me at this point in time. But if you're after a decent mid, then I reckon he is a great choice. I'm going to put the question mark here on uh, on Cookie from a buy point of view. I think he'll be really decent in the short term, but obviously with the news that he's signed to the Dragons, it'll be interesting to see how the Rabbitohs actually treat Cookie and will they look to uh, share his minutes around a little bit more. That's definitely one to look out for, but there's no doubt about it. He is in a decent vein of form thanks to what looks like the Rabbitohs coming pretty good in the last couple of weeks. Next up, Jerome Hughes. Let's give him the tick. He is an absolute weapon at the moment, especially without Cam Munster. He is absolutely taking control of the Storm side. And if you need a half, I reckon he is the best buy at this particular point in time. Teddy, well, he is the gun wing fullback. And if you can afford him, I definitely recommend that you, uh, you get him. And I think he's going to be one of those players that you lock in for the remainder of the season. And I don't think he will let you down. Now, Fletcher Sharp, we're going to put a question mark on him because I think if you are down trading, he's a decent player to down trade into. We're all assuming that he's going to be there next week. He obviously doesn't play this week, but could be a decent cash out option either this week or next week, especially if you have a high degree of confidence that he is going to play. Onto the holds, Ruben Garrick, it's really painful here. Look, I got him for this round's buy coverage, and obviously he's out with that extended HIA. He doesn't play next week, he's on the buy, so I can see the logic in selling him. I can also see the logic in keeping him. You know, he's a player that's going to be doing the kicking. He scores a decent amount of points. He's pretty consistent. For me, I'm holding, but I can see the, uh, the logic in selling. Jack DeBellin, well, he's just not getting the minutes at the moment. He's put in a couple of disappointing scores. But if you got him, chances are you got him for these buy round coverage. So I reckon just hold a little bit longer. If he doesn't perform this weekend, then consider selling him next week. Jaden Braley, similar sort of story. He uh, He's just sharing minutes with Phoenix Crossland at the moment. Absolutely not ideal, and it is costing him points. For me, I reckon jump off or trade into somebody that uh, is going to deliver a little bit more consistency. So for me, he's either a sell or a hold. I think you can't go wrong either way. Now, I do see the next guy, Jermaine Hopgood. A lot of people are selling him. I think that's silly. He's not called Hop God for no reason. He is an absolute weapon. And I think the time off will uh, actually give him the opportunity to heal his body and be ready for the run home. So for me, he is 100% a hold. Nico Hines, I think the big problem with Nico at the moment is he's going to leak an absolute mountain of cash. 
And psychologically, you know, is he going to bounce back from being axed from the New South Wales team? That's a big question mark. Personally, I've got him in my team. I'm holding. I'm expecting him to uh, to really come out next week and absolutely put on a show and remind the selectors of exactly what they are missing. KPP, Kai Pierce Paul, he is another hold. But again, it really comes down to your team how many trades you've got, and what impact selling a KPP will have on your side, especially going into some of these buy rounds that we're up against. He is injured. He's not playing this week. He's not an urgent sell. So you can really take the time to consider exactly what you want to do. So have a think about that one. And in terms of the sell, we'll just rattle these off pretty quickly. We've got Armstrong here. I think his time is done at the Knights, especially with Sharp in that fullback role now. And of course, Ponga, not too far away. He's probably five or six rounds away, but I reckon Sharp is the future there and he will hold on to that spot. Kelmar to Alungi, I think he is another one that you should consider selling. Daniel Atkinson, I think he is definitely a sell too, especially with Nico no longer in the uh, State of Origin squad. And seemingly with the uh, Cronulla Sharks favoring Trindle, I think it is unfortunately time to move on Daniel Atkinson. And finally, the last guy on our list is Jack Cole. I think he is a sell as well. Now, I'll just move on to what's happening in the uh, the fantasy market. And you can see this is our who's hot and who's not list. And one of the things that I want to bring your attention to is that there just isn't anyone really that stands out. There's a big spread. There's not a lot of people making a lot of changes. Now, what you'll normally notice here is that there is usually some sort of like fire icon. And that usually indicates that a player is being picked up by a whole bunch of people. And that's just not happening this week. The spread essentially out of this group of people is around about 1%. So not a huge amount of change. And you can really see the type of players that uh, people are going for. And most of the guys on this list are pretty fantastic. You know, Jaden Campbell is good. Hopper Wadi, well, you know, we've got question marks over his future, but he's cheap. Paps, we know what he is capable of. Big Stefano, amazing. Jerome Hughes, amazing. Damian Cook, very solid. Tedesco, probably the best in the position. Maxi Plath is doing an awesome job. AFB, amazing. Again, probably the best in his position. Jack Whiten is a little bit of a question mark, but he does have the uh, the dual flexibility, which is amazing for him. Api Corusau is probably the best value hooker at this particular point in time. Fletcher Sharp, we know he's cheap. Herbie is an amazing center. Keon Kalamatangi is again an awesome player, but you know has he peaked and will he be able to hit the same heights he's been hitting for a few weeks? And David Fafita, we know he's awesome but he is coming back from an injury last week. Now, moving over to the who's not list, I reckon there's a whole bunch of mistakes here, and you can really see some superstars that just stand out, like Ruben Garrick. I just don't think that is a smart decision to be selling him. David Armstrong, I agree with. Jaden Braley is a, uh, a 50-50, so let's just put that in there. Jack DeBellin, same sort of story, 50-50. I can understand why people are doing it, but if you bought him, you probably bought him for the buy period. Harry Grant, I don't think that's a smart decision, so I'm going to put the big X there. Daniel Atkinson, that definitely makes sense to me. Kelmar Tuolungi, that makes sense. Kuli Kefu, Finny Fuiaki, I kind of agree with this one. I think the uh, the Cowboys have the, uh, the toughest amount of buys to go. I think they still have all three, including the one this weekend, so I can kind of get that one. Personally, if I had him, I'd probably be holding until after next weekend, but I can understand why people are moving him on, that's for sure. Jermaine Hopgood, I think, is a bad decision to move on him. Kai Pierce Paul is a 50-50. It really comes down to, again, what you need. Talungi, I don't know. I think he's going to be pretty stable, so I'm going to probably say no on that one. Jack Cole, I agree with. Xavier Willison, I don't agree with. Pierre Kura is essentially going to be in this Broncos team for the remainder of the year. So I'm going to go no. And Kale Eero, absolutely not. I think he is probably one of the better centers that we've got in our sides this year. So I can't see the sense in selling him. Anyway, guys, there you go. There is the uh, the shortened version of our buy, hold, sell. Now, I'm very sorry that the uh, the schedule has been thrown into absolute disarray. 
just work and life is absolutely occupying a, a massive part of my life at this particular point in time. I've got kids having birthdays. I've got my wife traveling all over the country. I've been back and forward to Sydney. It's absolutely a, a peak time for me at work as well. And unfortunately, over the last week or two, this has had to take a little bit of a backward step. But I am hopeful, at least from next week or towards the end of next week, we should be back on track in terms of, you know, normal programming kind of schedule. We'll put out the more detailed buy, hold, sells, and we will do some more team reviews and that sort of thing. Anyway, guys, look, thank you for your support. As always, I really appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. If you've liked the video, don't forget to give me a massive thumbs up. And as always, guys, I will see you all in the next video.